Hey, Nerdcore News fans, Josh Alston here, and I'm here with Greg Berg, the voice of Donatello from Ninja Turtles, as well as many other your childhood favorites. How you doing, sir? Terrific. It's great being here once again. <laughs> now, you've done voices for cartoons for a long time, right? Yes, I stopped counting after 30 years of doing this professionally. <laughs> there you go. Now, a lot of the fans would know you first off as uh, the voice of Donatello from Ninja Turtles, but little few people would know that you also did the voice of Bebop. Well, the same actor, Barry Gordon, who was the original Donatello, uh, also did Bebop's voice. So going into the agreement with the uh, company to do Ninja Turtle uh, cartoons was I have to be able to carry the Bebop voice as well. And uh, I have a script that also has me doing a guard voice and all that. So back then in the uh, 80s, 90s, when cartoons were uh, cut down to four-hour sessions, uh, we were also able to do more than two, maybe three voices at, in one session. So they try to get you for whatever they can, uh, incidental parts as they call them. But uh, main characters were Donatello and Bebop, and then there might be an incidental character they might need you for. And uh, with six or more of us in that studio there, we each had to cover whatever they threw to us. And, that's what our jobs were as voice and multiple voice talents. Now, being a multiple voice talent and knowing that and quite often uh, Donatello and Bebop would have interactions and whatnot, did you ever find it hard trying to do both voices or did they have you do that where it's all Donatello one point and then Bebop or did you have to mix back and forth? Well, luckily I used to play doing two voices uh, where I could in my early days of training, I used to love Abbott and Costello. And for a while there, I would do Lou Costello like this, and after a while I would do uh, Bud Abbott and say, uh, hey Lou, what, what are you doing today? I'm not doing too much, why don't we go to the market? You know, or something like that. So I had that in my mind, being able to jump from character to character. But to do it professionally, you had to practice at it, keep at it, make sure the personality and everything else that goes into doing voices is uh, distinct for each particular character. Uh, prior to that, we, I think I believe I was doing uh, Muppet Babies in the 80s. Uh, 1984, we started Muppet Babies that led into the Ninja Turtle call, which was in the 90s. So on Muppet Babies, I was doing two characters and extra ones as well. And they no. would interact with each other. And on Muppet Babies, uh, you were Fozzie Bear and Scooter. Yeah, I'm Baby Fozzie Bear and Baby Scooter, and they don't sound alike at all. <laughs> that is so amazing to me, being able to go back and forth like that and being able to keep it all straight in your head. It's almost having to have the episode go on in your own mind, just be able to keep it all straight. I've never been analyzed yet, but uh, I, I think that would be quite an interesting uh, idea to see how I can go from one voice to another. I'm not asking how I do it, I just do it. Uh, many years ago, Robin Williams was asked how he can uh, turn into all those different characters and come up with all that material. But he just says, like, a beam of light comes out of the sky and hits him, and he's off doing it. And that's kind of what I do with my voices. Now, I heard uh, a small conversation bit earlier, and I was intrigued by the topic. Uh, you have done the voice of John Travolta. I do various celebrity sound-alikes throughout the course of my career, and I have done John Travolta's voice for a movie called Chains of Gold, where he was on a telephone in one scene, and for whatever reason, nobody could understand what he was saying, uh, there was noise in the room or something, and they called that ADR, automatic dialogue replacement. They weren't able to really bring John Travolta back just for that one little scene, so they searched for somebody to sound like him, and I happened to match the voice that they were looking for that he was doing at the time, because he, he also does character work as well, so, yeah. I didn't know that. So, in, in doing all the characters and all the, the different, um, have you ever had to reuse a voice? As far as reusing? Like, have you ever had to use the same tone or the same inflections you would have used for Donatello with another character or somewhere down the line? Oh, I try to, as far as I know, each voice is individual for whatever the situation is. When you talk about John Travolta, that John Travolta voice I did was John the actor, the uh, personality. Uh, I have done offshoot characters of uh, people who sound slightly like him, 
and uh, for 20 years on the Rick D's morning radio show and uh, worldwide uh, weekly top 40 show, we did a character called John Revolting, who was kind of like an airhead, and you know, so I didn't want him to be confused with like John Travolta because John Travolta was more like this and very distinct in thinking about what he was saying. But tra this John Revolting character was like just a, a, a airhead. <laughs> So I guess from be, being able to do John Travolta's uh, character, uh, I just pulled back on it to supply it for that movie and not make it so silly, and that's what worked. Wow. It's got to be a, an amazing trip to get to lend your voice to so many things and then turn around years later and see how they're still affecting people. Well, I'm very fortunate to be part of uh, shows that became icons of... America's uh, uh, cartoon watchers from Muppet Babies. That's uh, a nine-year run that we did uh, of original episodes. Ninja Turtles, I have to put the asterisk in there with doing six to seven episodes, as far as I know, because I was filling in for the original Barry Gordon, who, who was the original Donatello. And uh, so my voice quality happened to match close enough to what they needed to fulfill doing that character. And I'm just happy to, I don't even want to say I'm representing the turtles and look at me. I said, I did that work. If they like that, come up, say hi to me, and I'll be at these conventions every once in a while and meet fans of the show. Uh, I originally started with a show called Robot Man and Friends, but that was a pilot, and it was based on a comic strip, so people who follow comics uh, uh, might remember that obscure comic at the time. And that could have turned into a big show, but uh, it took it another direction. And as I say, it was a pilot, so we wanted to see where that was going to go. And for the fans that you have out there, what upcoming shows can they catch you at? Uh, for this new year of uh, 2014, we're here. Uh, in the works was Final Fantasy, a video game. See, I, I, being able to do multiple voices, they use me for video games, uh, interactive projects, uh, commercials. Uh, animation and uh, spokesperson voices. So this year, uh, the game Final Fantasy, I think it's 14, is in the works to come out for this year. Uh, in 2015, we did a mo movie or a VHS kind of uh, deal for a show called Gnomes and Trolls, which is a CGI animated cartoon. And it'll feature the voice of Roger Moore. So look for that in 2015, according to the sites I've checked that kind of list and follow my work as well. And that's good to know. <laughs> Absolutely. Sir, I want to thank you very much for giving us your time. Oh, I'll let you get back to the fans. For Nordcore News and Josh Alston, we're out.